This is the International Brothers of Electrical Workers 1260 Union Leader $3.7 million embezzlement case presented by me, Alex Somomitsu, and Tiffany Gabailo. Today, we'll be going over a brief summary, the company involved, the perpetrators, when and where, with a timeline of events, why they did it, how they covered their tracks, the outcome, and precautions that the company could have taken to prevent this fraud from happening. Over the course of June 2011 to May 2016, Brian Ahakuleo and his wife, Marilyn Ahakuleo, engaged in embezzlement and fraud. Brian Ahakuleo hired his family members, who did little to no actual work for the union, and authorized union funds for their personal use. Mm -hmm. The Ahakuleos managed to hustle over $3.7 million from their members. The company involved was the International Brothers of Electrical Workers, shortened to IBEW 1260. IBEW first began in 1941 here in Hawaii and in Guam. IBEW has since expanded to a diverse local union after being primarily for Hawaiian electric workers. IBEW also represents blue collar workers such as utility, Navy Yard, warehouse, and cable broadcast TV workers. The main perpetrators are husband and wife, Brian and Marilyn Ahakuleo. Brian is a former business manager of IBEW. He started working for them in 1992 and was later appointed by Tulsi Gabbard to the Honolulu Salary Commission. That commission determines the com Commission on Salaries of Employees. As for Marilyn, she was a clerk of IBEW. Both of them were found guilty of wire fraud and embezzlement. The fraudulent activity began in 2011, as there was a conspiracy to Brian Ahakuleo's winning vote into office. The fraudulent activity ended shortly around 2016 as the Ahakuleos were unseated as board members and their fraudulent activities were discovered. Since then, they have been investigated and action is being taken against them. Brian is currently being held in custody and Marilyn is soon to be imprisoned. The IBEW business is located here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Now for a quick timeline of the events, this all started in 2011, when Brian was voted into office to be the business manager of IBEW 1260. In 2012, he was sued by a former union employee, his name was Decano, for wrongful termination. Decano is discovered to have a tricky path with the law, as this isn't his first time he was sued for wrongful termination. He had been arrested several times. He states that he was fired because he was asked by Brian to murder another employee, and he refused. In 2016, Brian was unseated as a board member and his fraudulent activities were brought to light, which placed him under investigation. The conspiracy of his rigged election turned out to be true. In 2019, the Aja Kuleos were indicted and the IRS began an investigation on them. Decano, as I mentioned earlier, also passes away during this year, and the union pays without the legal fees. In 2022, Brian was officially found guilty of 70 charges and is being detained until sentencing in March 2023. In 2023, Marilyn was found guilty of 46 charges and was sentenced to 70 months in prison. Her sister, Jennifer Estensian was found not guilty on any charges. Now let's get into the why they did it. Throughout the trial, Marilyn was often accused of greed. She reportedly purchased two vehicles using union money, one during her time as an employee 
and one during her investigation. Money was also heavily spent on trips to Vegas, Japan, and China, taking first class flight flights and staying in luxurious hotels. In their perspective, her and Brian have remained innocent. Brian even states that everything we did was for the member's benefit, not for us. So now we're going to be talking about how the Alcuelos had covered their tracks. So Brian was accused of filling vacancies on the union's executive board with people who had no experience and who were loyal to him. This included many family members. The way Brian made this possible was by making work conditions super unpleasant. He reportedly would turn off the AC, would not allow food or beverages at work, and use several other filibuster tactics to make board members want to leave. Ajo Coelho had also hired employees in Vegas who were proven to actually do little to no work for the company, but have ridiculously high salaries. According to court documents, he paid his family excessive wages, which was in violation of union bylaws, and used union member money to pay for his family's personal expenses. As his family funds declined, he would raise union fees to make up for it. His wife also had edited the union meeting minutes to cover up their tracks to have longer, longer meetings. This would raise their um, justification to raise union fees. Since it was mainly Brian's allies who were board members and other important high-ranking employees within the companies, funds weren't carefully audited, and Brian and Marilyn would also reimburse the company for trips. However, it was discovered that the checks they had written to reimburse the company had actually never been deposited. Okay, so now we will be getting into the in the outcome of the case. So recently, Marilyn is set to surrender herself to be imprisoned on May 17th. Brian had been found guilty of 70 counts of wire fraud, embezzlement, and money laundering. He is currently being held in Hawaii Federal Detention Center, and the conspiracy charge of his rigged election for becoming board member carries a maximum term of five years imprisonment. Each wire charge, each wire fraud charge carries a maximum of 20 years imprisonment. Each money laundering charge carries a maximum of 10 years imprisonment, and each embezzlement charge carries a maximum of five years in prison. In total, they're facing possibly 40 years in prison. Brian still awaits his trial as it was supposed to be held in March 2023, so last month. Now we'll be going over the precautions that could have prevented fraud. Fraud within an IBEU company could have been prevented if a system of legitimized internal controls were set into place. This includes human resources, an establishment of responsibility, a segregation of duties, and an in independent internal verification. For now, we are going to get into the human resources control. So by having an appointed human resources representative, IBEU could have controlled the hiring and firing of employees. This would include their background check, their identification and skill set, seeing if they are right for the company, and seeing if they have a criminal background, as they had missed with Decano. The department could have also deterred fraud by rotating duties of employees, and an example of this would have been having a qualified staff handle the books and several members of the team to ensure that that staff is following the law. Okay, next, we will be talking about the establishment of responsibility. If IBEU 1260 were to create an establishment of responsibility, the Ahu Coelos wouldn't have been in charge of the majority of the finances. Instead, Brian spent union money on lavish trips for him and his wife, allowing them to travel the world first class. If responsibility were established, only authorized personnel would have been able to handle that cash and auditors would have been able to see exactly what they're spending money on and would have been able to control the spending of that money. 
Okay, so next we will be talking about the segregation of duties. By segregating duties, Brian wouldn't have been able to embezzle the $3.7 million he did. He was made both business manager and financial secretary of IBEU 1260. This should have been two completely different individuals to deter fraud. As stated before, when his family's money ran low, he would raise union fees, which would be approved by all his allies as they were the board members. Instead of what it seemed like just a handful of people handling the money, each employee could have been given a separate, very specific duty to ensure things such as whenever the Ahuquelos reimburse the company, that could have been either completely omitted where they wouldn't be able to do that and not use company money for that, or they could have been verified that those checks had been deposited. Okay, and lastly, we'll be talking about the independent internal verification. With independent internal verification, an employee could have been made an official auditor for the company. By having a main auditor who is unrelated to the Aja Coelho's, cash flow could have been more delicately verified. By utilizing the HR representative to determine who would be the sole designated auditor, such as a financial manager who isn't also the head of the board, IBE may have escaped this issue. And different employees would have been maintaining cash and union fees wouldn't have been so uh, drastic and it would have been more stable when it, and wouldn't have risen as much as it did whenever the Ajo Coelho's needed money. All right. And lastly, these are our sources for this project.